Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this online training program on sewage water. I'm thankful to Water Today for organizing this program. My honor that I'm speaking to so many people together on a Saturday, which is likely to be, you know, the holiday for most of you. So without wasting any further time, let me start the presentation. Why are we here? And one of my colleagues from Water Today informed that there were many queries for such training programs because people want to know new sewage treatment technologies, new products in sewage water treatment, comparison of different technologies, application of the new technologies in day-to-day -day operations, optimum use of existing resources. See, sometimes some products and technologies are already available with you guys, but you wanted the optimum use of that. Cost minimization by using better practices. Sometimes a plant is already established with you and you want uh, to just uh, do some optimization on that particular plant. Okay. Before we really progress further on this class on sewage uh, treatment, let me tell you that it's not possible for everything to be covered in half an hour or 45 minutes program. So I'm very thankful to Water Today who organize such programs. And I understand they are organizing a similar e-master class program for a detailed program for four days for serious treatment management and practices. And on that, I'll keep informing you from time to time. Right now, let's put focus back to the screen. We have a glass which is shown on the screen. And this glass contains HOH in short, we talk about water molecule, which is in, in this particular uh, glass. What is happening with time? If I leave this glass as it is, some impurities will come into it. And where does impurities go? Typically the impurities want to go into intermolecular space because right now there is nothing. So right now there is nothing on, on this particular uh, uh, glass, it's only water. So over a period of time, when we, when we keep on getting some impurities, they will start contaminating this water. Gases will go inside the intermolecular space. But other impurities like floating impurities, suspended impurities, collides and sediments, they do not go into intermolecular space, but remain outside it, making the water dirty. And if this water is dirty, we talk about some materials which is already dissolved. It is called dissolved impurities. Dissolved impurities will have two major classification. One, it would be inorganics, which comes from inorganic origin of materials, and another one, organics. The inorganics can be further classified as sodium chloride, you know, example, as ionic impurity, and some impurities will be non-ionic, for example, silica. Why I'm touching this fundamentals is about, okay, ultimately, when we are looking to treat our sewage, and convert that into a good water, we must also understand what is the meaning of a good water. Organic impurities are usually two classes, dead or live. By dead, what I mean, the values like BOD, COD, TOC, that all we measure in our wastewater, sewage, gray water, whatever we talk about, they, they are dead. They do not grow with time. They, they remain constant with time. Uh, so they are, they are dead impurities, organic in nature. But there could be certain impurities in water which grow with time. For example, bacteria, viruses, they are live. So when we address the wastewater management, specific to sewage treatment, we must be aware about what are the kind of impurities which we are dealing with and how these impurities, for example, live bacteria, virus, etc., are important towards our wastewater management protocols. With this, I think we have more than 200 parchment now. So let us go more detail into the question. What is happening in our nature? The sun is providing us energy and that energy is constantly evaporating water. So we eat any water treatment bodies that we have, surface, lakes, canals, evaporation is always taking place. And when the evaporation takes place, none of these impurities which we talked about dissolve or all these impurities go out of that water body and it keeps on concentrating. So it becomes our responsibility 
to make sure that we treat our waste so nicely that our water bodies are not contaminated. Therefore, a good expert, an engineer, would behave like a doctor. For example, you go to any doctor and, and you ask for any you know, ailment or anything. So he will not give a prescription unless he will go into a detailed study of your problem. So a good engineer in water treatment understands its wastewater treatment characteristics with parameters like gases, floating matters, clay, silt, organic matters, collides, what kind of ionic impurities are present in that particular water, what kind of amalkalinity is present in the water, what is EMA, equivalent mineral acid in the water, phosphate levels in the water, do you have any kind of organic molecule like sugar or phenol into your wastewater? What is the level of silica in your wastewater? What are your organics? Those, those organics, can you classify them as COD, BOD, TOC, etc.? And what is the level of microorganisms? That means whether this wastewater which is there is healthy, already having some microorganisms, or it is so you need to develop microorganisms. So once you have the knowledge of your waste, you can go ahead and think of doing something called pretreatment. Now, if if what is pretreatment? So whatever waste you are having at one particular place, you would like to take into an area called lift station from where you will pump. Because typically, all your waste will come to the lowest point in your premises. From there, you need to lift. And then you can take it to the influent weir, where you would like to make the flow measurement. After that, you would like to take it to some screen. So there's some kind of floating material, plastic bottles, uh, cork, uh, and all those kind of things which are easily separated by a screen. You will screen it. Till this time, water is coming at a full flow, full velocity. And you would like to still the water for some time to go for an equipment called grit chamber. In grit chamber, you will collect some grit like sand kind of material, heavy particle, etc. And then you will fill everything in your wastewater. Why we are so, saying so? You go to a, something called equalization basin. Then if you go to equalization basin, then, then what will happen is in the equalization tank, you will homogenize all the waste which is coming to you. Once the homogenization of waste is done, from here, you can see small curve, pumping rate versus time. And this is what we are talking about. Typically, a wastewater treatment plant should be working on constant rate of pumping to primary system, which is area called sedimentation and where you want to do that. This is very important, very important for the success of any wastewater treatment plant. A lot of time, this point is actually ignored. So this area, which I'm talking about here, constant pumping rate, it's one very, very important to, thing to understand into design of a CO treatment plant. Okay. How do you do the pretreatment, or rather a word called clarification? You simply achieve it by you, you have a river or any, any kind of a water body from where you can go into screening, and you can go to flash mixture, you can go to flock later, you can do the clarifier, you can go to flash mixture again, flock later, you know, all these equipments you are aware of. And typically what we do is, once, once we do that, we, we have typical feed water, which is any quality, I'm just putting a river quality, and then you can go to a treated water quality and blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. So you say you already know pretreatment. The reason for this slide is that this pretreatment, which is right now here, is not the right pretreatment for your sewage. The purpose of this slide was not to show you what is pretreatment. The purpose of this slide was to tell you that this is not the right pretreatment. This pretreatment, which we studied a lot and which is available worldwide, is applicable for water, which has got turbidity. Okay, turbidity, 3000 and TU and all that. So you require things like coagulation, flocculation, etc. But sewage does not per se require that kind of coagulation and flocculation. So therefore, in our pretreatment uh, uh, section in wastewater treatment, we will we will we we try to do something similar, but not necessarily the same methodology of using coagulant, flocculants, etc. In fact, uh, uh, e e our uh, organizers. Water Today is are organizing a four days of a detailed training program, which will be concentrating on various sewage treatment technology and processes. And uh, I think I'll be covering uh, the various designs of modern way how to design the pretreatment plant into that particular section. For the time being, just we enjoy bar screen, alum line flocculation, 
slow speed agitation, clarification, which is a very conventional way of working, actually does not really work for large scale sewage treatment plants. Sludge, however, whatever sludge is there that you can take it to, you know, you concentrate it, you can take to sludge drying beds, you can do it with thickness, centrifuge, bell presses and all that, and you are pretty clear. So by now, I've just given a little bit of uh, introduction. There are some participants raising hands, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, by the design of this uh, uh, training program, I'm not able to uh, right now quickly access your chat boxes or can allow you to ask a question. There is a separate question and session uh, at the end of the session, that is time wheels. Okay. So if I'm talking to so many people, I have got two simple choices. One, either I complicate the subjects so much that it becomes beyond your capacity to understand, or I try to make it simple. So I prefer the idea that we'll make uh, the project very, very simple. Today's session, very, very informative, very, very basics, and very, very fundamental level. A lot of complicated things we can definitely discuss in our e-master class. So you look at this water, water body, beautiful, all blue water with a lot of flora and fauna. Water can be consumed in only two ways. First way is that we withdraw and return less. That means all our cities, all our municipalities, they take the water for our domestic purposes, the water drinking, bathing, or whatever purposes, and we do not return back. If we do not return back or we return less, that means we waste our water, either it seeps into ground or whatever way, our water bodies are spoiled. That means it is our responsibility that if we take the water from a water body, it must go to the water body back. And otherwise it will all become desert. I think everybody agrees on that. The second thing is, okay, we return everything, but what we return is this, what you see in our photographs. That means we return a lot of pollution back to our water bodies. Is it acceptable? The answer is not, it is not acceptable. So a water must come to a level of water. In the picture, you would have seen a nice word called W-A-U-G-H-T-E-R. I believe water, which is the daughter of water, will solve the problem on this planet. Water once used, picks up some contaminants. Remove those contaminants and respect the recycled water as the daughter of water. And then only you will be able to solve the problem on a planet. Moving further on, we just get into slightly more details of what we are talking about. What is the normal water use? Drinking or potable use. That's where we need fresh water. Cooking, we need fresh water. Washing and fun. We need fresh water, of course. Kitchen and sanitation, we need fresh water. Washroom sanitation. Now, I don't want to interact with you because the mics are on, suddenly you are silent, but you are thinking what Sanjeev is talking about. Washroom sanitation, can we use recycled water? Can I use the water which I is spelling W-A-U-G-S-T-E-R? Or I would be greedy that, no, no, even during sanitation, I need fresh water. So at the time of planning your sewage treatment, at the time of planning your water use is the first step towards planning in sewage treatment plan. A lot of time, organizers and authorities ask me about sewage treatment plan design, but people should first plan how much fresh water is actually needed for us. And that planning means a sewage treatment plan probably will be designed slightly different. Wash water, room sanitation, we can definitely use recycled water. Landscape development, we can definitely use lots of recycled water. Correct or not? Answer is correct. Landscape development, flora and fauna development, we can use it. And we can have a planning together that a lot of rainwater can be collected and we can use that water to artificially recharge some of our groundwater aquifers. Moving further, the education for the future people is Swimming pool, for example. Can I work with the recycled water in swimming pool? Or is it necessary that the swimming pool water has to be 100% fresh drinking water quality? So a lot of recycled water can go in the swimming pool, in hotel industry, and all that. 
Water fountains, for example, a lot of time we use water for fun, you know, just fountains and flowing here and there. Can we use recycling water there? And with that thinking in, 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 in our mind, we, we move further on our, our fresh thinking. Artificial recharge of treated recycled sewage with groundwater quality monitoring system in place. So when we treat sewage, what we do, shall we direct the sewage to a river water body or we can also uh, you know, recharge the aquifer because in some cases, water is withdrawn from the ground, not from the pond, not from the lake. It is used by humans because it's a groundwater is the only available water. But after that, we throw it on the surface, which evaporates. So the aquifer is not recharged. So these are some bigger level of thinking which is required at the planning stage. And we come back again. Why we are putting so much of a stress on treatment, 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 treatment? It is because we need to drink. And what we talk about drinking water, we should have a TDS of 500. Color, odor, bacteria should be free. That's it. As long as you have that water, you will be happily drinking that particular quality of water. Color, odor, bacteria free. That's all. But one can drink water up to 2000 TDS. So with a little difficulty in taste, but drinking water up to 2000 ppm is allowed. Needless to mention, the water should be free from things like arsenic, fluoride, nitrate, etc. They should all be within the limits. So if anybody will ask me what is, should be our treatment of sewage water, I will definitely say the best treatment of would be in such a way that you reach TDS less than 500, color, odor, and bacteria, nil. That's it, because that's what you drink. Now let's put our focus back to the topic which I was talking about. Is it sewage which is the problem? The answer is no. Have a picture in your mind. What is there in the toilets? My answer is simple. It's water and some impurities. I don't have to tell which impurities. You know what kind of impurities you produce in toilets. What kind of impurities you produce in hand wash. What kind of impurities you produce in kitchen. So the modern thinking in sewage treatment is not to focus on sewage, but to focus on the impurities. What kind of impurities are there in my water and how do I manage that? We have an idea in our mind about all these impurities. Do need to know a little bit more about these impurities. These impurities we typically classify in terms of things like suspended solids, oil and grease, BOD, COD, nitrogen, Microbiologic wise, it's active water because there are bugs into that. There is a possibility of some metal. There's a lot of possibility of surfactants being used in our laundry. So this is what is the defining the challenge part. 